Hello, Munnerus here. Today I will be showing you how to make tank tracks. Now, they're not going to be real tank tracks, as you will see now. They are basically this. Um, they're plates attached to wheels, which kind of emulate how a tank track would work. They're not perfect, but they're non-laggy and they work pretty damn well. As you can see here, there is a constant connection with the floor where all the plates rotate round. The wheel in the middle does not actually touch the floor. That will be no collided with the world. So don't think the wheel is actually doing the majority of the work. And let's begin. The first thing you always have to do is point north. Put your spray down, look at the top of it, and that there is pointing towards north. Make sure you're building north. I cannot stress that enough. Now go ahead and spawn a plate. I'm going to use this big one just because it's easier to demonstrate what's going on. Now go ahead and spawn yourself a wheel. Snap it so it's 90 degrees like this, and then we're going to attach it to this plate. I'm going to use a precision alignment here. You could use a precision tool if you have to, but I recommend learning how this tool works by following what I'm doing now. Now, when you go to do this, spawn everything higher up than I have here. I'll need to redo it again real quick. When we're done, we'll have something which looks like this. On its own, it's not going to do a lot, so spawn yourself a plate. This plate will do fine, but it does not need to be exact. Point it north, then get your precision alignment tool out. Right click the plate so it turns blue, then left click in the center of it. Then go back into the position alignment tool and click point 2. Then left click on the top center of your wheel. Now go back into position alignment, click point 1, then click point 2 on the right hand side. Click move entity. As you can see that moved the plate on top of the wheel whilst maintaining its angle. Now back in the position alignment tool, click line, hit pause, dash hit normal. Left click on the center of your wheel. Now click point, hit pause, and then ticking point 1 on the left, left click the center of your wheel. You can now delete point 2 by left clicking it, then clicking delete. After that, right click your plate so it turns blue. Then, pressing R while having the precision alignment tool out, click rotation. Left click line 1 in the bottom left, as that's the line we made on our wheel. And now is where a bit of math comes in. First of all, we want to figure out how many plates we want to have on our wheel. In this tutorial, I'll be using 12 plates. So, we have 360 divided by 12, and that will give us a value of 30. If we had a different value of plates that we wanted to use, let's say 8, we do 360 divided by 8. That will give us a value of 45. Whatever the value you get, that is the number we are going to be putting into the angle. Now, as we're going to be using 12 plates for this, the value you want to put into the angle is going to be 30. To input it, just double click the number and type. Now we want to hold down your left shift key, then left click rotate entity. Keep doing this until the blue plate disappears. I'll show you that now. There, the blue plate just disappeared. So now we want to press the Z key twice to undo it. When you're done, you'll have a nice star pattern, which will look a lot like this. Whilst having the precision alignment tool out, we want to right click our first plate, that's the flat one. Then press R, then go to the rotation tab again. Making sure that point 1 on the left is not selected, click get angles. Now select any plate that's not our original plate, so that one will do. Press R again. Still making sure that point 1 is not selected, that is very important. Click rotate entity. This will snap it to be flat like the first one. Now holding left shift, right click all the rest of our plates. If it sounds like it's making that little digital noise, then you know you're doing it correct. And keep doing it to all the plates until that noise no longer happens. A nice technique to make sure you have missed any is go to the edge like this while still holding left shift and do the same to all these. None of them will probably make any noise, but it's good to be thorough to make, ooh, there we go, I missed one then. So it's good to be thorough to make sure you have missed any. Now it's very useful to color all your tracks different colors. On my server I have a nice command to do this for me called the fab command. Left click your name, left click there and everything is now multicolored. As you can see it is much much easier to distinguish all your tracks if you have them colored differently. If you're on a server that does not have this you'll have to manually color them yourself. Now once again we're going to grab the precision alignment tool. You could delete your all points if you don't want them, but we'll be clicking plane, hit pause, dash hit normal. We want to click the center of our base plate, then clicking plane, dash hit normal, 
we want to click the side of our base plate like that. The little green square should be perfectly centre with a line pointing to the side of it. Then we want to right click one of our tracks, making it blue, then pressing R to bring up this menu again. Go to rotate functions, then click mirror across plane, click plane 1, then whilst holding left shift, click rotate entity. As you can see this has mirrored the proper cross. We now need to do this to all 12 of our tracks. This can be slow and tedious, but do it one by one like I am doing. You do not want to accidentally double up your tracks. We also need to do it to the wheel. Once you're done, you will have a very fabulous looking tank. This next part will be attaching our wheel to our plate, but as you can see, there's no way to attach it. So we want to get our fading door tool out. Make sure your settings are very close to mine. They don't have to be exact. Then we're going to have to make sure that we fade the center tracks only. You can fade the rest of them if you want to, but it's a waste of time as it's not needed. Here are my center tracks, so I shall fade them. As you can see, this gives us much, much easier access to the center plate. So now we can finally axis our wheel to our plate. I'll be using the axis center tool, and remember to do this on both sides of your tank. I'll be attaching the other wheel to the same side because axis center doesn't really matter where you axis it to. And after that, we'll want to get our ball socket advance tool out. Click the full lock min button, or alternatively, copy and paste the values if you do not have these buttons. Now I'm going to refab everything on here so we have a new color palette. Then we will left click our plate, then left click the base plate. Do this for all of your tracks. Then once you've done that, get your Axis Center tool out. Keep your settings the same as I have. Left click the side of your track, then left click the side of your wheel. Do this for all tracks on this side of your vehicle. Then repeat the same on the other side. Then you can duplicate it just to test it. Remember to no collide everything, so no collide all multi will work fine for this. Unfreeze it and there we go. Now of course we need to change the weights of the wheels, of the plates and of your base plate. But as you can see that's the main principle of tank tracks done. You should no collide wield the wheels because you know this is a tank and not a car. And there we have it. I shall make a part two explaining how you should power this, how you should turn it, and how you should work out the weights. But until that video, goodbye.